definitely a motivator for me starting this channel to at least show this gripe of mine and hope that Gibson one day watches. I love the Gibson SG. It's probably one of my favorite guitar designs out there. Everybody's opinions will vary, but I love, you know, like the Telecaster, the Stratocaster, the Les Paul, but the Gibson SG is just one of those guitar designs I always fall back on. And if it wasn't for the unfortunate neck dive, I would say it's one of the most perfect guitars for me. Well, and there's one other flaw too. There's this flaw that came around when they changed the pickguard design to the Batwing pickguard design. Now the 61 pickguard design, which is underneath the strings only, it allowed the Gibson SG to mount pickups to a pickup ring. And those pickup rings had a taper to them. So if you looked at the bottom of those pickup rings, they were, they were uh, shallower on one side and thicker on the other. And that allowed the pickups to be mounted at a tilt. Whereas on the Batwing pickguard design, which is, this is my, my Gibson SG standard, this one has its own issue. So if you look at these pickups on here, they're mounted straight to the pickguard itself. And there is no tapering of these pickups whatsoever. It's its own problem. So a lot of people will go take to forums to try and fix this issue. And some of the remedies I've read about were stuffing foam underneath the pickups or extra springs, or, you know, there's a lot of really, really weird, strange, yet, you know, creative fixes out there on the horizon. But I thought about it and I was looking at other guitar brands and one big guitar brand stood out that had a solution and they didn't even need the solution. And that was Fender. And if you look at a lot of Fender guitars that include a humbucker, there are three screws that hold the humbucker in place. There's two on top and one on the bottom. And this allows the humbucker to be mounted at a tilt. Now, why Fender uses this? I don't know, they don't need it. Because the problem with the Gibson is that the necks are mounted at an angle. So again, look at this. The neck is at a different angle than the rest of the guitar. Now, I'm keeping this as flat as I can for the sake of the video, but you can see as I travel down this, this guitar itself, the body tilts or the neck tilts, however you wanna, however you wanna spin it. And because of that, the humbuckers come in at an angle too. They're not level with the strings. Now, Gibson does have one screw above and one screw below, and that allows you to adjust the height. That's it, that's all it does, just the height of the humbucker. So the problem when it comes to humbuckers or any pickups for that matter, is that the closer they get to the strings, the more it deadens the sustain. The magnetics will cancel out the vibration of the string itself. So you might get a little more tack, less sustain, which is kind of a problem for a Gibson guitar because Gibsons are known for their sustain. That's one of their defining traits. But on an SG, there's something about this that just has always driven me nuts. Now, I don't know if this is something that needs to be fixed. I mean, this could be a defining characteristic for the sound of an SG, is to have part of the pickup close to the strings and the other part of it distant from the strings. I don't know, that just it seems like it's not allowing the pickup to do what it's supposed to do. So I worked with WD Music and with Derek Duncan over at Seymour Duncan to create a solution, if you will. And thank you to both WD Music and to Derek Duncan for helping me out with this. WD Music uh, is not a sponsor. I ordered this. I gave special instructions and they followed through and it was beautiful. Derek Duncan did hook me up with a, with a product that is not released. It's not something that is available to be purchased. It's just something that he did. So I did work on a solution and it was basically taking Fender's pickup mounting design and applying it to Gibson. So let's get this on the workbench. All right. So I got the 2011 Gibson SG standard on the workbench right now. This is the real deal. You can see the fret nibs, yada, 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 all that good stuff. So this SG has an issue, like I pointed out before, and you can see how the pickups are at an angle. They don't match the the uh, angle of the strings and that could be its own problem because on one side of the pickup like on this side for example it's very very close to the strings which means it's going to deaden the sustain and then on this side it's going to be further away and so you kind of have to compensate somewhere in the middle to create a good output but i am not satisfied with that this has always bothered me and this has bothered me so much where this is also a catalyst to create the 11th fret channel so this is kind of a flagship video for me I don't know if it'll do well or not, but this is definitely a motivator for me starting this channel to at least show this gripe of mine and hope that Gibson one day watches. So lucky for me, I reached out to WD Pickguards and I paid for this. I didn't get a discount. I didn't do anything like that. Um, but I did request that they use Fender's Shawbucker style mount, 
And that's what we're calling this for the time being because Fender has that humbucker right. Why Fender uses it, I don't know. Why Gibson doesn't use it, I still don't know. But we're going to fix that. So I've got these two screws here. Now, how am I going to adapt a humbucker for that very purpose? Well, if I was able to create that pickguard or have the pickguard creative, what about the humbucker? Well, I also worked with Derek Duncan over at Seymour Duncan, and he created me these special adapters. He doesn't sell these. You can't find them on their website. This is very, very uh, prototype-like. But he created them especially for me. Huh. Feels so special. But what they do is they go right on top of the leg. And the problem that you're going to contest with if you use something like this for the Shawbucker style is you're going to have to grind away at the legs to make room for these screw holes. And that's what I already did leading up to this. So I'm going to be replacing these stock humbuckers in this SG with a couple Seymour Duncans. I'm going to be putting an SH-1659 Custom in the bridge and a... 59 in the neck. The 59 is and has been for a very long time my go-to pickup. I love it. It's just for whatever reason ever since I discovered it uh, when I was in my late teens I didn't know anything about pickups at the time and I just thought they were voiced beautifully. I loved heavy metal music and I thought even for heavy metal they sounded incredible which goes to show that the PAF sound is definitely ingrained in me. I love that pickup so this time through i decided to put a 59 custom which is a little bit hotter it's got mismatched coils and i'm curious to see what what this will do the bridge these strings are also relatively fresh so i'm not really in the mood to change them out so i'm going to slack the strings i'm going to take the stop bar off and then i'm going to lift the two pneumatic out and just take this whole pickguard assembly out of the equation but first we need to flip it over and we need to basically desolder the pickups in there so it's easy to pull them out. All right, now in this uh, control cavity, I've rewired this once before using a pure tone jack and using CTS uh, TAOT 525K pots, all measured accordingly. And then I used orange drop caps. And the pickups in here are stock. I believe uh, it's a 498T in the bridge and a 490R in the neck. But we're gonna take those out. And I like those pickups. I do think they sound good. I'm not gonna clown on them. So we got these pickups disconnected. Next, let's slack the strings before I do that. My little trick to keep the strings, at least not from tangling around themselves over the headstock. Let's just clamp down here with a capo. I've got tons of Kaiser capos, so I have one out here on the workbench. And then actually, before I do that, I'm gonna take that back off. I was too excited. Slack the strings. Now, some of you guys might cringe at this idea. I, know, I get flack for it. Rightfully so. I still do it anyways. Now we clamp. And then from this moment in time, we use a flathead screwdriver. I always like to tape it up a little bit first. So get some tape on the flathead. And then I gently unscrew. And I do the tape so it doesn't mar up the, uh, the posts. You gotta do it incrementally on either side. Nice if I angled the camera correctly. Okay, now we got the bridge that's coming off. Remove these. Next, off goes the pick guard. All right, perfect. Now, I don't need to take these pick pickups out of this pick guard because I'm not going to use it, but yep, we've got a... Interesting. So, yeah, we've got set of Gibsons in here. I I'm just going to presume that this is the 498T and the 490R because that's what came stock on this model. It could be something else though. Um, I'll measure later to figure out what these are. But um, for the time being, I'm going to replace them. So before we really dive in, let's make sure that the pick guard will fit. Make sure the screw holes match. They match here. Here. Yep, we got it matches this is going to be a challenge these posts are slightly off that can be remedied with a, a file let's go ahead and do that okay let's see let's make sure the screw holes match they do it's not as pretty and clean as i would like it but they're going to be covered by these posts anyway so it's not really going to matter too much visually as you see it just covers right over that makes me happy so i got this honeybee swarming around my face okay out out 
out. So first, let's go ahead and get our screws in place. All right, I had to take a little brief minute to go pick up my child from school. So look at that, we got a three screw mount. And as a result, we can angle. And that fixes a lot of issues. Now, can you angle a pickup using other methods? Sure, but you have full control using this method. If you use foam underneath your humbucker to do the angling, the foam will eventually wear down and give away. So this method is not going to wear down. Maybe those adapters will because they're made out of like a like a carbon fiber or like a, I don't know what material that was, like a, not fiberglass, but was, I think it was actually more like some sort of resin material. It was like 3D printed, um, but it worked and it, hold, it held firm. So I got the stuff in there and Sorry I didn't capture that part on video. I was kind of scrambling to get this done. The lighting is a little different in the garage right now because the sun is setting. So the sun is now blasting straight into the garage onto my workbench, onto this black guitar with this black pick guard, this brand new black pick guard. And that's gonna suck if the heat has its way. So now I've got the strings back on, tunematics on, loosely tuned up, string height is set, perfect, right? So now we can look at how the pickup angles are, and it's a little more precise. I have full control. So if you look at how this is right here, ah, there we go. See, I can adjust the angle accordingly. And I can set it the way it used to be if I really want to. That option is still on the table. But if I'm not into that option at all, then here we go. Nice level pickups. Gibson, if you're watching this video, why are you letting Fender steal your thunder? They don't even need to do it. It's like they're teasing you. Now, some people might feel that this looks stupid, but I like it. So this is exciting for me. I'm pretty tickled how this turned out. I mean, look at that. It's perfect. Why wouldn't you want your guitar to have this kind of flexibility? I mean, you could do whatever you want with it. Why is this such a problem? Gibson, come on, get with the program. Have you tried this yourself? I mean, are you, am I the first one to really do this or do you know anybody who's done it? And I'm not talking about other guitar manufacturers. I can go down this whole rabbit hole and we can start with Guild. We can even start with Schaller. The three screw mount is not a new thing, but why won't Gibson use it? That's the big question. That's what I want to know, because what I just did on this is a solution. It solves a lot of issues. It doesn't make the SG perfect. It doesn't make it, I don't know. I mean, it, it could make it better, it could make it worse. I don't know yet. We'll find out. But I think having this option on the table to be flexible makes a lot of sense, a lot more sense than what they've been doing for decades and decades and decades. And I'm not slamming Gibson at all. A lot of, there's a lot of Gibson haters out there. I mean, we can, we can go down this whole rabbit hole of, of Gibson haters on the internet. There are select content creators on YouTube who make a living on hating Gibson, but I'm not one of them. I love Gibson. I just don't understand why they don't do this to their own pickups. I mean, it, it makes sense to me why they should, but why no one at Gibson has, has come up with this is, I don't know, it, it baffles me. If you work at Gibson, let me know in the comments too. I mean, maybe there's something political on the inside. Maybe it's sticking to old formula, but I mean, come on, it makes a lot of sense. And if you like guitar related videos like this, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel to be part of the 11th fret family. And make sure you also hit that little bell notification to be notified when I upload new content so you don't miss anything new. Thank you guys for joining me on this video and sticking around. And I look forward to seeing you guys on the next one. See you soon, everybody.